I'm gonna suggest that actually the best order to do this in, the question, is not the order that's been provided. I think we should do part B first, okay? So, what's the situation? Well, I'm going to first write down what I understand about the situation, and then we'll launch into part B, and then I actually think B leads into A, and then C, and then so on, which is weird, and not the way they laid it up, but whatever, okay. So, let's have a think. Um, I'm gonna draw up a table. I'd love you to draw this with me, actually. Um, what the table is gonna help us to understand is how all of the different um, numbers in the question relate to each other, okay? So, um, what I wanna have a think about is that um, there's many different possibilities that we have to try and keep together, and rather than list them, they're actually related to each other in a systematic way, okay? So what I wanna think about is, uh, let's, let's have these two different columns for what actually happens, whether a person's actually sick, which means they're actually positive, right? Or whether they are actually negative, okay? So I wanna have a look at three things in particular. So there's the total, and then there are the test results, right? So there will be people who test positive and there will be people who test negative in both of these groups. Do you agree? Okay. So, um, for starters, how many people? Have a look at the question. What proportion of the people actually get the disease? So that's this group here. They're actually positive regardless of what the test says. So that's 1% of the population. And the other group is the 99%. Thankfully, most people are healthy, okay? But then, when you have a look at the, um, uh, the test results, right? Um, this is different. So if you have a look at the people who are actually positive, thankfully the test catches it most of the time. 80% of the time, if you're positive, the test will be correct and until you're positive. So I might just put a, um, where my colors go? I might just put a tick here, right? This is where the test gets it right. But that means 20% of the time it gets it wrong, right? It tells you that you're negative, but you actually are sick, right? So that's not very good, right? So I'll put a cross there. That's bad, right? What about the people who aren't sick? So the people who are actually negative, what percentage of them get told that they're positive? 5%? So that's pretty small, but remember, this is a mismatch. They're actually healthy, but they get told they're sick. So this is, this is bad, right? Thankfully, the bad numbers are small, but you know, some of them are still quite considerable. And then obviously that leaves 95% over here. Okay. All right, now, like I said, we'll do something a bit different. We'll have a look at part B, okay? So they give you this formula. Um, it's, the, um, it's this one, A intersection B equals this. Okay, now, I need you to answer me really honestly, okay? When you look at this, do you have any idea what that means? <laughs> yeah, yeah, which is totally fine. This is actually really important because I learnt this formula years and years ago, and I'm telling you right now, I remember looking at it and saying, I don't know what it's really saying because I can calculate it, like I can know what these numbers are and get an answer, but don't know what it means, okay? So I think probably the best way for me to explain what it means is actually to say what this comes from, it's actually a rearrangement of a different formula that I hope will make a bit more sense to you and also it's important for the later parts, okay? So remember we're doing part B at the moment, out of order, okay? What I'm gonna do is, I know it's gonna look like, who cares, what's the difference, right? But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide both sides of this equation by this probability and you'll see why in a second. So I'm gonna go the probability of this equals that probability divided by that probability. Now, on the board, what have I done? Just a bit of algebra, right? Like, do you agree I've just divided both sides by this? Why is this helpful, okay? What this means is, what's the probability if something happens given something else that I know? Such as, it's raining if it's monsoon season. That was the example I gave you before, okay? Well, what you wanna do is, you wanna say, remember I told you before, it's like, oh, 100% of the time, it will, be, it will be raining if I know it's monsoon season, right? But it's not always monsoon season, yeah? So just say, for example, you don't have to write this part down, but suppose in Malaysia, 50 days in the year, which actually is a lot for it to be constantly raining, 50 days in the year, 
is when it's um, monsoon season, right? But 50 days, like the probability of picking a monsoon day is actually 50 out of 365. That's the probability that it's monsoon season, okay? And then I might say, oh, what's the probability that it's raining and monsoon season at the same time? Now, all of the rainy days might be in monsoon season, so there might be 50 of them, right? And again, that is a probability, so it's out of 365. Now, if you have a look at this, it's one fraction, one number divided by itself. That's why it's equal to one. I'm like, oh, it's guaranteed, right? So what you need to know is, how often does both of these things happen together? That's what that, that weird symbol in there, it basically means both of them at the same time. So do you remember when we were looking at those Venn diagrams before, right? So this actually means intersection. So it's both of the things happening at the same time. That's what it's asking, right? So it's like, oh, here's rain, here's monsoon and just suppose it was they're all in the overlap, okay? But then you also need to know how many days are monsoon season, right? So you need to know how big that circle is and then those two things relate to each other, okay? So then if I know this is the basic way that conditional probability works, this is a thing and this is the condition, right? Raining, if it's known it's monsoon, you put these two fractions together like this, okay? And all I do is just multiply both sides by the probability of that, the condition, and then I get this, okay? So then, how does that relate to our question, okay? I need to know what my A is, and I need to know what my B is. And they are different, right? Like, this is not a, you know how if you say, oh, what's three plus five? It doesn't matter whether you do them in this order, right? But if I say, what's five take away three, that, that does matter, the order is important, right? Can you see here, the A and the B, the order does matter because you divide through by this and not the other one. So I've got to know which one's which. So look carefully at the question with me, read it. Find the probability that a person tests positive but does not have the disease. A person tests positive but does not have the disease. What's the condition? What's the condition and what's the thing we want to find out? Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. So, what is known in part B is that they don't have the disease. Can you see? It says, find the probability that a person tests positive but does not have the disease, right? So, it's actually known that they are really healthy, right? But I want to know what's the probability that they test positive anyway. Does that make sense? Okay, so if that's what the two pieces are, I just need to know what goes into here, right? And we've actually already written this up, right? If you have a look, um, my probability that they're gonna test positive is this 5% number here. Do you see that, right? It's 5% um, for them testing positive in this actual negative area, right? But then I need to know, well, how many people are going to be um, actually negative, right? It's like how many monsoon days are there, right? Can you tell me, look back at the table, what's the probability that you get, if I randomly pick someone, I pick someone who is actually negative? Well, it's actually this number up here. You see this? So this 99% is a little bit like how many monsoon days are there? Thankfully, 99 out of 100 people are healthy. Right? So my probability of getting one of these actually healthy people is going to be 99%. Right? So therefore, this probability, 5% times 99%, I'm pretty sure that'll give you 4.95%. That's the actual answer. Okay? How's your brain going at the moment? Do you have any questions about any of that? That's okay. It, it is a bit weird. Like, um, why we're multiplying these by one another. The way I like to think about it is, um, first, here's how many people you're looking at, because I know, like, I've got to restrict myself to this 99%, and then I say, well, 5% of them are going to have that test positive, um, favorable event. Favorable, right? I don't want you to actually test positive, but that's that, okay? So now let me go to A. Uh, hopefully you'll see why I think the order is weird, right? Part A says, what percentage of this group would test positive? 
Well, I already have this part of the group. They test positive even though they're healthy, right? So the probability of testing positive, it happens in two ways, right? Firstly, there's the people who test positive but are actually negative. That's the one I just worked out right there. That's 4.95%. But then there's another group of people who test positive. Who are they? The people who actually are positive because I removed them from the group when I was doing this, right? Um, but thankfully, I can work it out in exactly the same way. So remember how you said, okay, test positive, actually negative. So I multiplied these two numbers, right? I'm now going to go over here and I'm going to say test positive, actually positive, right? So 80% of them will test positive, but there's not very many of them to begin with, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this number here, 4.95%. And what I'm going to add that to is 1% of 80%. Or if you want to think about it the other way, 80% of 1%, which is 0.8%. Like that's just this multiplied by that. Is that okay? So obviously you can pop that into your calculator. What is that? 5.75? That's the percentage. Okay. So can you see why I thought it was weird that you do A and then B? afterwards, because to work out A, you need to have worked out B. Anyway, weird textbook. Okay, now we can keep going, and this is where it starts to get really interesting. The bell's gonna go shortly, but I think we can get there, okay? So part C says, what's the probability of a false positive? Okay, now, what does this actually mean? Well, this is gonna get to um, the conditional probability fraction that I made here before, okay? So what I wanna know is, um, this is the probability of, and the question even says it, right? It's actually negative, but it's known that the test is positive. So this is me trying to use this notation here, okay? All right, now, we actually have already worked out some bits of this, right? This actually negative, but test positive, that's actually, um, that's actually related to this number here right? These people are actually negative and they've tested positive, yes? But they're not the only people who have tested positive. So this is the fraction that I need here, right? The people who are, the probability of getting someone who's actually negative but tested positive, that was this part here. So that's 4.95%. But the probability of getting anyone who tests positive, remember there's the other people who are actually positive, right? So this group here in part A, that's all the people who test positive. This is, the, this is the B that should be in the denominator. So my denominator should be 5.75%. So these are the people who are actually negative and test positive, and this is all the people who are testing positive, whether they have it or not. Um, you can go and put that into your calculator if you like. I think you get something like 86.1% or so. Okay. Now, okay, I, <laughs> I'm going to be really cheeky. Um, uh, I kind of need to leave everything there because I think it relates. So I'm just going to write part D here. Okay. This is now the probability of a, the other way, false negative. So this is about, you're actually positive, right? Like, sorry, you're sick, but the test tells you you're negative anyway, right? So this is kind of the reverse of everything that we did before. So what I need to do is I need to work out, okay, instead of multiplying five times 99, these are the people who test positive. I'm actually gonna be multiplying 95 by 99 because I need them to, I'm interested in the people who are testing negative. Does that make sense? So therefore what you're actually gonna get, I'll, I'll write it here for you so you can follow it up later, right? Um, this group here is, the, the top group is 1% of 20%. Just have a look at where I got that from, right? These are the people who, they're actually positive, but they test negative, right? This is a really bad situation, right? You don't wanna be really sick, but then told you're healthy, because you'd be like, I'm fine, I don't need treatment. That's a bad situation, right? So that's why it's on my numerator. On the denominator, I need to account for everybody 
who test negative, which includes this enormous group over here, right? So it includes that 1% of 20% that I just mentioned, but it also includes 99% of 95% because those people get told they're negative as well. I know you've tested negative, I just don't know which one you are. Are you actually positive or actually negative? I don't know, that's why I include both of them here, okay? Um, you can go ahead and you can work that out. Thankfully, this is not a very large number, it's about 2.1%.